Oh, where have you been, my blue-eyed son? Toronto is Canada's largest city with a population of over two million people. More than 5,000 of them are homeless. It means that you have no place to call home. You don't own anything but the clothes on your back. And whatever you can carry. You have no bed to sleep in, no heat in the winter, and nothing to fill your stomach. A decent meal and a place to sleep are luxuries you can only dream of. You may be mentally ill. You might be an addict, an alcoholic. You were probably abused. Your life is a struggle every day. If you're homeless, you are alone without the love and support, family and friends to help you. The homeless are men, women, single mothers, and abused children. They are both young and old. Over 800 people sleep on the streets in Toronto every night, 365 days a year. Two homeless people die each week on the streets. Most of us just walk by them. Some of us call them names like hobo or bum. We yell, why don't you get a job when we pass them on the streets? Have any of you ever stopped and smiled? Bought a sandwich or a cup of coffee for someone that looked like they needed it? Have we ever noticed their suffering? Has it meant anything to us at all? My name is Isabella Italiano. Today I'm going to introduce you to a woman who refused to walk by a homeless person named George. He had a name, a story, and he was important. With the help of students just like me, one woman's idea, hard work and kind heart, inspired an entire country. She is called Sister of Mercy and Street Clothes. Her name is Sister Susan Moran, the founder of the Out of the Cold program. This is the story of a Canadian hero. Please tell me about your childhood. Where did you grow up? What was the most important lesson your parents taught you? Well, I grew up mainly in Toronto, and I lived in Vancouver for a while, and I was born in Montreal. And uh, the most important lessons my parents taught me were um, to be loving and, and uh, to each other. And my mother and father were always opening the doors uh, to the poor and to the needy and to those that needed help. So it was a great gift. I had, I had wonderful parents. Um, when and why did you decide to become a nun? Uh, I always had a desire to be a missionary, and uh, and I had a desire to follow Jesus as a disciple, and uh, so I entered our ladies' missionaries to because of their missionary work around the world. What happened when I came in? My work was mainly with the poor and the homeless here in Toronto, and so that's been my mission for about uh, thirty years. When and why did you decide to dedicate your life to helping the homeless? Well, I was a chaplain and a teacher at St. Michael's at that time. And outside, just outside, was a homeless man. And the students would say to me, well, he doesn't have anything to eat and he doesn't have a place to go. And so the students who were, oh, 14 and 15 and 16, used to get a blanket and food for him. And um, I got involved. And then with a with the other chaplain at the school, Father John Murphy, and an Anglican priest, we said, well, where do they go? They don't have a place to go for lunch or supper. And this Anglican priest gave me a little room. And that was the first out of the cold. And the students cleaned the room, and they collected jackets and sweaters. And every Saturday, we got together with the homeless. Okay. Tell me about George and the children at St. Michael's College. Well, George was the name of the homeless person that was sleeping um, on the school grounds. 
and uh, the students. Uh, it, this is a great thing because only 14, 15, they're out look, taking care of them and uh, bringing him food, bringing him a winter coat, and uh, and just befriending him. And so that time at St. Michael's, all the teachers got sweaters and they got jackets, and, and they really helped. So that's that's the beginnings of Out of the Cold at St. Michael's. How did you and this group of children launch out the Out of the Cold program? Well, this group, and, and you know what was interesting is the students, like they're 15, 16, we're up around Bathurst and St. Clair, and they go all over the city. They go to Dundas, and they go to King, and they go to Queen, and uh, they bring the homeless. But then I was realizing that people were sleeping outside. They were sleeping in phone booths. And I, I had no idea that people were so hungry. But it was launched by the students. The students loved the homeless. They are very good with them. In 2006, you were awarded the Order of Canada. What was it like to be given this award? What do you, where do you keep your medal? Well, it was quite an honor to receive the Order of Canada. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't believe I was getting it. And I don't know where it is, actually. <laughs> I put it, <coughs> I put it in some place. I don't know if it's there. But it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was quite an honor. And, and it really was the wonderful people that I worked with that deserved it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, how have the friendships and relationships you've made with the poor changed? Well, that's a very important question because your relationship with the poor and the homeless, <coughs> they make you more aware of what really life is about. See, like in the art of the cold, the greatest gift are the homeless themselves because they're so compassionate, they're so loving, and they help each other. Mm -hmm. And and so and those are the values that are far more important than some of the values that we have. So they change your life because you know, you yourself become you become poor yourself. And uh, your understanding mm -hmm. of life is has changed you, you know. You're more interested in being a companion to somebody or helping them, or you're more interested um, in making sure that people are happy or have food. I and mean, then they give you all those beautiful gifts of love and compassion. What is the greatest lesson working with the poor has taught you? The greatest lesson that, that I can see is that they have given to me a gift of love that I would never have seen before because in their own suffering and in their homelessness, they have, they have grasped to something that's really important. And that is that life is precious, life is a gift, and friendship and love and sharing are the greatest of gifts. Okay, and last question. What is your greatest hope for the future? My greatest hope for the future is that there'll be enough homes for everybody, that there'll be better housing, and uh, that there's better support and housing, um, that there'll be peace among the nations. That's another reason for homeless. People come from another nation, they don't have another job, there was, there's been fighting and violence. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's something we all have to do. We all have to enter into this of, of being um, peacemakers yeah. Yeah. and loving each other. This is Rudy. Unfortunately, he needs to spend the night. When I was photographing the mattress and blankets set up for the night, 
Many of the homeless did not want their picture taken. Rudy was different. He wanted to talk to me and tell us a story. We talked while he rolled up a cigarette. He told me all the evils of crack, weed, cocaine, and how it ruined his life, and landed him in jail many times. The suffering I saw in Rudy's face and in all the homeless upset me. Many people there were clearly mentally ill. I enjoyed Rudy's company. He asked me to visit him again and show him my video. I plan on doing it. This is day two out of my Out of the Cold program experience. I'm going to go in there and help prepare dinner for over the 100 people who are coming soon. Now I'd like to tell you the most important lesson that I've learned throughout this whole experience. How lucky I am. How lucky we all are. How lucky we are to have food to eat and shelter and love every single night. Thank you for listening. Oh, where have you been, my blue-eyed son? And where have you been, my darling young?